Well, good morning, imperfect people. <laughs> How are we all doing? You know, during the worship, and man, that was anointed. Um, I, I just kind of like saw Jesus looking at us, you know, and just saying, you know what? It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what your failures are. It doesn't matter what you think your sin is. It doesn't matter what your doubts are. It doesn't matter how strong or how weak you think your faith is. I still love you. And if we can just for one second just be grateful that we have been touched by the life of Jesus. It's not about gymnastics. It's not about performance. We know that. It's not about God, me ticking boxes with God. I love what the scripture says. If you believe in his name, you will be saved. Amen. That's all. It's just believing. But Jesus, I believe in you. And when you say that with, a, with genuineness, from your heart, he steps in. And I just feel strongly that the Holy Spirit is busy with some people in this room this morning. Some of you might be doubting whether you are standing in his presence. It's like I'm hearing some thoughts right now. Uh, you don't know what my week's been like. You don't know what's come out of my mouth. You don't know how I've failed. That does not intimidate him at all. God is not intimidated by your condition. I want to say to you this morning, as you listen to the word, as Holy Spirit touches you, respond by faith. I love what Jesus said. Blessed are those who have seen me. You know, that was like the disciples and when Jesus walked around, you know, Blessed are, but he said, even more blessed are those who have not seen me, yet they believe. Do you realize we're more blessed than the disciples were? Anybody out there? We're more blessed than they were because we do not see him, we have not tangled him, but we believe. And I want to say to you guys, just believe. That's all it takes. So right now, just as you're in his presence, if you're saying in your heart, I, I want to believe, just raise your hand. No, I can hear it. Thank you, ma'am. Anybody else? I just want to believe. My heart just leapt for joy this morning when I walked in and I saw that whole row of young people at the back there. You're young, Monique. And I, it was like I felt the love of the Father reaching out saying, this is my creation. This is my creation. Young people, life with him is the greatest high adventure you'll ever have and never have a hangover. 
So just respond to his presence. Just keep on responding. So this morning, you know, good old Kerry, I've always got to give a title for my sermon, so I thought I'm a title it, Who Knows? <laughs> Who Knows? Who Knows? What's going to happen? <laughs> and you know, so often we say that. Who knows? Who knows how this is going to turn out? Who knows what will happen tomorrow? Who knows what's... And we, how many of us have said that? Who knows? Two little words. Who knows? Who knows what my future will be? Who knows what job I'm going to get? Who knows what my future relationship, my marriage and all this? Who knows? You know why we say that? Because we are so limited in our knowledge. Because if we knew, we wouldn't ever say it. So the fact by saying who knows is proof that even the most intelligent person that walks the face of the earth does not have the answer for tomorrow. Does not have a solution for tomorrow. Or even today. But I want to say to you this morning, as a child of God, oh man, what an advantage we have over people who don't even know who he is. Excuse me, who he is, or don't, has never sensed his presence or felt his love. Times we live in is uncertain. Well, you just got to go to a brine, listen to conversation, and you'll pick it up. The things that people are saying, and that, that we, we seem to say we have so much knowledge available, and we do, we have more knowledge available today than we've ever had before because of the internet and all those things. But not all of that is true. Even though we think we have knowledge, I want to say to you this morning, our knowledge is limited. Einstein's knowledge was limited. And with that comes confusion. Confusion comes when you, the, the fact that you say who knows means you, you're not sure. There, there's a bit of a confusion as to do I do this or do I do that? Do I go here? Do I go there? Have any of you ever had those thoughts in your head? If you haven't, just please come pray for me afterwards. <laughs> but all of us have those things rumbling through us. Who knows? And I want to say this. Wikipedia does not always have the answer, nor does Google. Answers that we need are sometimes unavailable because we proceed with our limited knowledge and miss out on the things we can have. So I believe this morning that as we open our heart to Holy Spirit and say, come, Make the word alive in me. We're going to start to find a way that we can move forward. And I want to share with you this morning just a few steps we can take. And by no way is this a complete thing. We know that. So if I look at the word of God, I see that there were so many people who were uncertain in life. Show me one person in the Bible besides Jesus who was perfect. I'm not going to find them. Show me one person in the Bible except Jesus that never messed up. You're not going to find them. What you are going to find is people who were limited in their knowledge, limited in their life, limited in so many ways, but yet amazingly stepping out of themselves into Christ, into God, gave them a purpose and they did not even know where they were going. Remember Abraham, God says to him, take your family, take your cattle, take everything you've got and leave. Didn't tell him where he's going, he just said go. <laughs> Do you think Abraham might have thought, who knows what's going to happen now? But he obeyed. And look what happened. Don't have time for that. But I want, I want to look at Job this morning. How many of you have ever heard of Job? It's neat job knee, it's Job. An amazing man. 
Man, I, 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 my brain was tripping when, when I was reading again about Job, of this man who went through more hell than you and I have ever gone through. Sometimes we think, oh, my situation, it's so bad, and how am I going to... But let me tell you something. Just go to the scripture and you'll find out there's a lot of guys and women who had worse situations than we ever have. And we need to be grateful and thankful for that. Richard, please read it for me. Where then does wisdom come from? Where does understanding dwell? It is hidden from the eyes of every living thing, concealed even from the birds in the sky. Destruction and death say, only a rumor of it has, has reached our ears. God understands the way to it, and he alone knows where it dwells. For he views the ends of the earth and sees everything under the heavens. When he established the force of the wind and measured out the waters. When he made a decree for the rain and a path for the thunderstorm. Then he looked at wisdom and appraised it. He affirmed it and tested it. And he said to the human race, The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to shun evil is understanding. Thank you. What a man. Lost his family, lost his children, lost everything that he had. And even then his wife, the so-called helpmeet, says to him, why don't you just curse God and die? The last person that could have stood with him and said, Job, we're going to make this together. We'll get through. And she says, why don't you just curse God and die? And she wasn't being terrible. She couldn't handle the pain that she saw in her husband. And what was Job's response? I will praise him. Job wrote these words when he said, the one who has true wisdom is the one who places their trust in God. Listen to this, people. Here's a key for your life. If you want wisdom, trust God. Don't trust yourself. Don't trust yourself because you know yourself. Trust him. And so with this scripture that we've just read, we see Job's responses in all these things that have been happening. I still trust in God's plan. Still trust him. He's got a plan for me. I'm trusting him no matter what. How many of us can say that? Because the moment some things go wrong in our life, the first thing we come up with is, well, where is God in all of this? He never left. He's still there. The difference is Job trusted God going through the pain, going through the sorrow, going through everything that was stripped from him. He refused to not trust God. And we know what happened, right? He got restored. And everything came back better than it was before. But not until at the very point of a massive decision, he said, even if he kills me, I will trust him. It's beautiful. And I also love Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6. You lo- this is a beautiful scripture. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. Awesome, isn't it? What a promise. That's a promise with a condition. Acknowledge the Lord in all your ways. What will he do? He will direct your path. But if you don't acknowledge him in all your ways, he can't direct your path. So stop blaming God if you've gone down a wrong path. Because that was your choice. That was not because of the church or because of God or because of the worship team or because of... Stop that nonsense. It's because we make decisions often based on our knowledge and our emotions without bringing God into the picture and saying, you're first. And what you say 
goes. It's a powerful scripture. That's, I wish I could unpack it, but I'm not going to. But there is something in here that says the reason that we need to acknowledge the Lord in all our ways is because we do not have the answers. Do you? If you did, you wouldn't ask who knows. Or why? Or where? And so it is a beautiful thing when we can come to that place. You see, I want to say to you this morning, listen to me. You're a spirit being who has a soul and you live in a body. You often heard me say this is your mud pack. When you die, this goes back to dust. But your spirit man is alive in Christ. And that's where he communicates with you. That's where the direction comes from. When you allow the Holy Spirit who's in your spirit as a believer to have sway over your soul, which is made up of your emotions, your will, and your intelligence. Not what I want. But what do you want, Lord? And so in that process, there is something about Father saying, okay, come on now, together we're going to take, go together down this journey that I have laid out for you. And how many of you know that God has a plan for every single one of you in here today? He has a plan for the whole, all the nations. But what does it take? Trust. The fullness of God's plan. I want to say to you, in, in, in going over this, I realized something. That there's two things that happen when this situation arises. Either faith or fear. So when you do not know what's going on, you can either have faith or you can have fear. It's like two paths before you. And you can choose now, I'm going to either go down the road of faith, where faith is what? Believing before you see it. Fear is, I'm terrified of what I'm going to see. So the thing here is that you, 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 I think for all of us in this room, believing that he knows what's best for us. I tell you guys, listen to me. I struggle with this sometimes, that God knows better than I do. Just being honest. That when a situation arises, no, I, I can handle this one, God. It's okay. You, you do too much. You can just wait over here. And how many of us have found out that you're running to a wall at a rate of knots when you put him outside of your decisions, outside of your life? And it's not him putting the wall there. It's you deciding to run into the wall. And so often in our Christian life, we come to the, oh, Lord, I'm so sorry, forgive me. I should have come to you. Train yourself constantly not to be like that, to, to come to him, to listen to him. We need to embrace faith. We've got faith, man. We've got God's faith. It's not your faith. It's God's faith. Because he gives every man a measure of faith. And if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, what can you say to a mountain? Get lost. Or in Hebrew, for tzak. <laughs> so you need to understand this morning that you have faith already, whether you believe or not believe. God's put faith in every human being on the face of this earth. I don't care where they are, what they are, what language they speak, what nation they come from. God has placed faith in every man on the face of the earth so that when he comes to them, they can say, I believe in you. Mm. We need to choose faith, man. Come on, guys. We need to say, I, I don't know who holds tomorrow. There's a song I used to sing in church as a kid. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. Isn't that a powerful song? Because he knows I can face tomorrow. I want to say to you, that's a, a word for you this morning. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Wouldn't that be great that we have no fear? Do you know that you choose to have fear 
or you choose to have faith. It's a decision you make. It's not about ooh, floating around you. You either choose to be fearful or you choose to say, I will not because God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. I am not nuts. Because that's what fear will do to you. It will start to make you believe you're crazy. Now, there are some crazy people. And I love them. They bring a bit of difference. We've all got crazy ones in our family. They're your family. Love them. I love what Jesus did in Matthew 6. Um, we're going to read it, 25 to 34. Jesus speaks to the disciples, and he, or to the people, sorry, and he says, do not worry about tomorrow. Do not even worry what you're going to wear. That's one for you, ladies. Do not even think how you're going to feed yourself. If he takes care of the sparrows and he sees every sparrow that falls from the sky, how much more will he not take care of you? This is truth, people. This is not some nice little words written by Hallmark. These are words that come from the word himself. But what did he say? He said, seek first. The kingdom of God. What does he mean? It simply means I have to surrender my will, my thinking, my path to him to seek his rule and his reign over me. And then all these things will be added to me. What a promise. Seek first how to do it his way. That's what it's saying. Seek first how to think like him. Oh, but Charles, I'm not God. I can't think like them. I know, I know. Thank goodness you're not God. But I want to say this to you. He has given us his word, and the word of God is his thoughts. That's why we renew our mind to the word. It's not what I think. It's how he thinks. It's not what I feel. It's what he feels. It's not what I see. It's what does he see. So powerful. So Jesus says, don't even worry about your life. Hey, young guys, don't worry about your future. Oh, that was quiet. <laughs> Maybe I should say, all of you, don't worry about your future. Seek first his way, and he will direct your path and lead you and guide you into all that is true concerning him. His love, his grace. We can go on and on with that one. Faith is what gives us the courage to face uncertainty. My goodness. <laughs> you know what, what uh, I just want to say this. Faith, I believe. What faith does is it gives me courage to walk through the, the water, to walk through the fire. Faith does that. I will not be moved by what I see. I will not be moved by what I feel, but I will be moved with his word. Because only his word will take me through the fire, take me through the flood. His word will see me come out on the other side. And let me tell you, God's not going to, pick you up and just zip you across the river and drop you. It's like this morning, the vision. He's standing on the other side of the river. And what is he saying? Walk through this river because you will not drown. Sometimes we feel like we're drowning, right? But he says, if you walk with me, you will not drown. If you land up in the fire, you will not even be burnt. It's all illogical, isn't it? Because it's logical. When you walk into a flooding river, what's going to happen to you? You're not going to be floating like a lilo down that river. If you walk through a fire, what do you think is going to happen to you? Talk about a bry. <laughs> and we are going to go through those things. We're not excused from that because Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble. But be of what? What does that mean? 
here in your heart. I'm standing and holding on to him. He's not going to let me down. James 1.5 says, If any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God. I, I just love the way the scripture says this. It doesn't say you better ask him. He says, if any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God. Hello, lights on, there's a key. When you ask God, who gives how? Generously to all without finding fault. Oh man, there it is. I don't even click on that one now. From what I said earlier. He looks at you not to find fault. You know what we feel like sometimes as people? We often think this. We think, well, I've failed. They're not going to like me. I've done wrong. They're not going to like me. I don't measure up. They're not going to like me. He's not intimidated by your mess-ups. He will not find fault. And it will be given to you. Ask and you will receive. It's a principle. Ask and you will receive. It's a promise. But you can't have the fulfillment if you haven't asked. You see, that's the thing. Every promise you come across in the scripture has a condition. And when you fulfill the condition, the promise comes to pass. If you do it in faith. So it's an awesome thing that we can come to him. I just love Psalm 119, verse 105 says, God's word is a lamp unto your feet. That means that shines a light where you are right now. It's a lamp unto my feet. And then it says, it's a light unto my path. He illuminates the path as you walk in faith according to his word day by day. He will illuminate your path and you will see how, excuse me, where he's taking you. God's word is a lamp unto my feet. That's my present condition. I need to get into his presence, get into the word, just listen to him, obey him, yield to him, and he throws a light on my circumstances right now. And then he's saying, you keep on trusting me, you're going to see how my word will be a light to your path. The only time you don't have a path to walk is when you drop dead. But until then, we all are on a journey. We are all walking on a path. So the word of God is so powerful. I tell you, just the fact that I can get into the word of God and say, show me, speak to me. You know, there's a song, I don't, even, I don't think it's a chorus. I think, I don't even, John, you might know who's saying this. You light up my life. You make me feel as if everything's what? Whatever. Yeah, ta ta ta. <laughs> How many of you remember that song? Kind of a little bit prophetic. Because in reality, you light up my life. You make me feel everything's going to be fine. Come on, people. You're not defined by your circumstances. You're not defined by what's going on around. We're not even defined about South Africa's situation. Right. Snap out of it. We're not defined by what government does or doesn't do or who says or what says. We're not defined by that, people. We're defined as the sons and daughters of the living God. Come on. Not going for victory, coming from victory. Enforcing the victory that Christ has already won the battle. Because you are more than conquerors through Christ, not yourself. I'm going to round up with this one. Peace. How many long for peace? Sure. But have you ever discovered you, can't, you can make peace with people but it's different to be constantly in peace. Just take a drive down the highway to Richards Bay and have a few taxis in front of you. We know what it's like not to have peace in this country. In that sense. But listen to what the living word says. I think it's in Philippians. 
Did, I, did we put it up? No. Okay. It says this in Philippians. 4, 6, and 7. Do not be anxious about anything. What does that translate to in Afrikaans? Mini skrik for nix. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation. Are you reading this? In every situation. What's your situation now? In every situation, what should you do? Pray by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. You see, when you put thanksgiving with your prayer, it kind of builds your faith. And then he says this, present your requests to God, not yourself. Present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds, especially in Christ Jesus. Practical. There's a solution. You know what the, 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 the heart of God is? That we will not keep on trying to find peace. We will come from peace because he is peace, and he is in us. So when the storm is raging around you guys, you know he's in the boat. <laughs> and he has that authority to say, be still. And he will get you to the shore. And you will not drown. Come on. That's peace. That when I'm going through the fire, I know I'm not going to burn up. My circumstance is not going to overpower me. My failure is not going to overpower me. Because I live in him and he lives in me and he is peace. But you know how I get his peace? I include him in everything. I bring my request to him with thanksgiving. It will guard your heart and your mind. And we all know this is the battleground, right? This is where all the nonsense happens. You don't have an action without a thought first. Hello? When you clap somebody, you thought about doing it and then you did it. Mm hmm. But if you have the peace of God in you, you might still think, I want to clap you. <laughs> and then you realize, no, I'm not going to allow this thought to overpower me and rob me of my peace. Faith over fear means we will pursue his wisdom and rest in his peace. Worship team. And I want to say to you this morning, we have so much going for us. You've been encouraged by the word this morning that you can take him at face value for who he is, and he will never drop you. But I've learned something in my few years of being in the Lord. And especially in the ministry. I used to think I was doing ministry for him. Which was not a good time. Until I realized I'm doing ministry with him. Which is a great time. Guys, with God. With him. Neat, neat. With him. Connor sitting in the back there. I can say, oh, I'm with Connor. And I'm not lying because, hey, Connor, come here, please. I want to demonstrate something. Come on, be a brave man. Come on. <laughs> See, I didn't forget your name. <laughs> come up here, Connor. You don't mind. I'm not embarrassing you. It's just look how tall he is. You haven't seen me on the inside yet, mate. <laughs> So I can say I'm with Connor. Yeah. But if I go like this, with Connor, just walk with me. 
with Connor, all things are possible. Mm -hmm. Does that change your picture? Thank Connor. You know what I tell you something? Your future in him, if you would just trust him, what I've said this morning, is going to be incredible. You're very intelligent. You're a thinker. You don't get moved by emotions. As a matter of fact, when you see something very emotional, it irritates you. By that smile, I guess, hitting a point. But this is not me talking to you. And I, I, I hear the Lord saying this, that as you just surrender to him, don't figure it all out. Stop trying to figure it all out. It's like, you, I, I just see so many kind of papers in front of you going, is it this, is it that? Am I going to do that? Am I going to do that? And I'm just hearing him saying, trust me, trust me. Please think, God gave you a brain. But trust him. And I don't know if you understand what I'm saying now, but if I had to kind of look at you like you would be in a movie, I would see you with a massive shield, a massive sword on fire, the super warrior for Jesus Christ. You know what? The enemy, the devil, is real. And he's tried to put things in your path to block you and stop you from going places. But when you trust Jesus and his power, I don't know if you've ever heard this, Connor. There's a scripture where it says, Jesus said, I will build my church, and that's us as people. It's not a building. And the gates of hell will not prevail against us. You know what that means in the original? Kick in the gates. Kick it in, man. And you've got that kind of a <coughs> in you. Just yield to him, man. He's going to take you places. Take you places. Bless you, Connor. Thank you. I'm going to wrap up by saying this. At least I'm not as long as others preaching. But I want to just say this. All of us can take that word and say, I'm going to drag it into my life. By faith. Let's stand.